very welcome back. Now, living with chronic migraines is a very debilitating condition, one which Bridget O'D has been battling for nine long years. And as a result, she has spent the last 3,285 days in constant pain. She just told me it's probably gone up since then, actually. But she's been in pain for a very long time. As today marks European Migraine Day of Action, she joins us to share her story alongside Dr. Sinead Byrne, our resident GP who runs the headache clinic in St. Vincent's Hospital, Dublin. Bridget and Sinead, you're both very welcome this morning. Bridget, before I come to you and talk to you about how you manage this, I want to go to Sinead and say, Sinead, yeah. uh, what is a migraine? You know, because we all get headaches, yeah. but yeah. migraine really is, my own mother used to suffer yeah. with them, it's a different world altogether removed yeah. from headaches. So what is really, a migraine? You have a very good understanding, Sinead, because you were saying, oh, people say it's it's just a bad headache. It's, it's completely not. not. Yeah. In, in fact, it's under the umbrella of neurology. It's a neurological condition. It, it basically takes place when the, the brain isn't working properly. Um, and it's neurological, it's not just a headache, um, and we don't understand why exactly some people get it, but we do know that there's a, a strong family history. So 60% of people that get migraine, they'll, they'll have inherited from either a mum or a dad. So it tends to run in families. Um, and like that, Sinead, unless you've experienced one, it is incredibly hard to understand how debilitating it is. It's listed, you know, the WHO have listed as, you know, one of the top forms of disability, like, you know, ever so once somebody experiences a migraine they, they can no longer move you know actually moving your head will exacerbate the pain um, just talk us through the symptoms the actually like how do you know yeah. if you're experiencing a migraine you'll know yeah but for so people lots, out there there's yeah. lots of different types of migraine but for most people it's a one-sided pain in your head a throbbing uh, pain so uh, there's also a list of other things that goes with it so nausea sometimes vomiting sometimes diarrhea with that as well um, it's very debilitating. Any movement will make that throbbing, one-sided pain in your head um, a lot worse. And then some people get an aura. About 20% of people who get migraine get a, a neurological uh, lead-in to their, their migraine. So that would be maybe visual changes, you know, the zigzag lines, the kind of uh, blind spots. So any visual change in the 20 to 60 minutes before the, the migraine kicks in, that's when they know it's, it's on its way. Um, other signs can be sometimes pins and needles in their hands, a weakness on one side of the body. So there's a lot of different types. And some people even get an aura, what we described, all those neurological things like visual changes and weakness without an actual headache. So sometimes we even diagnose people, we say, well, you're, you know, migraine with a headache or, or not. So you don't necessarily even have to have... Um, wow. A headache but it is incredibly disabling and that's the thing I think unless somebody's witnessed somebody in their own family experiencing a migraine and then the other thing is you can have an episodic migraine which most people many people will, will have experienced uh, a migraine you know about 12 to 15 percent of the country so that's half a million people in Ireland you know suffer from migraine but some of them might be lucky enough to to have that episodically so just maybe once twice a year whereas Bridget you know is somebody who suffers from that's chronic it. migraine so when it turns in to you know more than 15 days per month of a headache eight of which well, are migraine talk to Bridget. Bridget thanks for coming on to talk about this this morning because it does yeah. affect a huge amount of people and it's not something that people I think give enough credence to unfortunately you got your first migraine when you were just 15 which I thought was surprising for a teenager but Sinead said mm. no so so what actually happened to you do you remember um, it's funny I as a child always had bad headaches and I remember from as young as junior infants being moved so I wasn't sitting near the teacher's coffee or I wasn't sitting near the toilets. And then around the age of 15, the migraines exacerbated. Um, and I always remember one of my first migraines lying on the toilet floor and not being able to, I needed to vomit, but not being able to lift my head to vomit and being home alone. And just, it's actually quite frightening. That's it, it's terrible. Um, it's yeah. not just the pain, even still, I get, I get frightened when I get a migraine, I get scared. And I get them so regularly, you might not expect that I'd get so scared, but I find myself, I think I can't be in this much pain, and it's, it's normal. Um, and when you say you get them regularly, how often do you get them? Well, I suppose I'm in, I'm constantly have what some people refer to as maybe a background headache, which I find... So, so right now, you have a headache? Yeah, and I find it hard that, I mean, background headaches can be quite intense, as well the pain M most evenings when I get home from work it's kind of to my lava or um, it's that lying on the it. couch that it's you know the pain does it's bad quite regularly 
And when you get the migraine, then you're completely out for the count. You can't function, can't do anything at all. So this has yeah. had a really dramatic effect on your life. So have you worked out, are there triggers or what you do to cope with it? I mean, can you take any medication? Um, How do you deal with it? There are triggers and I do try and avoid my triggers. What are but your I triggers? I try to live a life as okay. well. You've so got that's to. the thing that I need to balance. And something like... Even coming on the TV show, the excitement of this might bring on a migraine, but it's my decision that it's worth it and I, it's something I wanted to do and that there are triggers that are more likely I will get a migraine and I still do them because I don't want my life to be confined to kind of walking by the sea every day. I love doing that, but <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want that to be all I can achieve. But would your triggers be, we often hear that foods, coffee and chocolate are related to it, or sometimes bright lights, or, or is it more an emotional response to things? Um, it is equally a lot of stress, which stress can be excitement, or it can be not, I, my body might be in stress from not sleeping regularly, eating regularly, um, and hormonal, do you, differences hormonal differences changes. Mm -hmm. How do you factor. deal with your migraines? Can you help alleviate them or is it just um, account really? Not hugely. There are some medications. I haven't had a huge amount of luck with them. So generally I'll kind of go to bed um, with a wet cloth on my head. Um, oh, God, <laughs> yeah, it sounds um, awful. It is, it but is. I mean... We I should say at this point, you know, Bridget is an extreme example. She is, and you know what, like probably I was just talking to her on the phone yesterday and maybe with Botox, you know, she would do really well. So there's Botox a prevention. Botox for migraines? We need to get her into yeah. to get this Botox. Yeah. So we but can then find a Bridget some help list. perhaps. No, yeah, absolutely, okay. but it, there's quite a wait as well to get the Botox. Botox is quite expensive and if it's done in a public hospital, there's quite a, a list of people but to kind of Schneider, to You're going to give us all the information and we're going to put it up on our Facebook page yeah. that people can go to certain yeah. websites to get the information they need because there are lots of things that you can do and maybe we can even help you Bridget. That yeah. would be fantastic. <laughs> Thank you for coming on this morning. Particularly migraine.ie so they okay. have incredible information. They supply all the literature to the headache clinics throughout Ireland. So migraine.ie. Migraine they're amazing. They Guys, thank you both very much and thanks for coming thanks on this morning. I really hope you don't get a migraine as a result of this. <laughs>